Thank you for joining Cancer Support Community Atlanta for this program. Please visit our website, cscatlanta.org, for a complete list of live and recorded events. We invite you to sign up for our newsletter to stay connected to all future programs. Again, this is Emily Brown, the Program Director at Cancer Support Community Atlanta, and you have joined us today for our nutrition seminar on healthy holidays, brought to you by Kristen Kuglowski, Oncology Clinical Nutrition Coordinator with Northside, cancer, um, Northside Hospital Cancer Institute. Kristen does these presentations for us every month. Um, she's so uh, gracious to donate her time to do these presentations for us. So without further ado, Kristen, I'll let you go ahead and take it away. Awesome. Thank you, Emily, and welcome, everybody. Uh, like Emily said, I'm Kristen. I am one of the dietitians here at Northside Hospital Cancer Institute. I do like to give a little bit of a disclaimer up front um, about these presentations. They tend to be a little bit more um, generic in nature regarding nutrition and your health. Um, so if you have really specific oncology nutrition needs, you're going through treatment, or you need um, just very specific questions addressed, we do have a team of dietitians here at North. They most likely are within the clinic that your um, physician is at. So you can ask us how to get in touch with them if you need some very specific help. Um, and then if you are outside of Northside, you go to Emory or Piedmont or Wellstar. Um, they also have dietitians on staff that can help for those kind of situations. But our topic today is healthy holidays. We are coming into the holiday season. I can't believe Thanksgiving is next week. Um, so I just want to help give you some tips um, and tricks on how to have some healthy holidays while you go through this holiday season. So our goals for today's presentation are to discuss common holiday health concerns. We're going to identify some of the health benefits of some of our favorite holiday foods, um, review some behavioral tips for making healthy food choices, discuss some different recipe modifications that you might be able to try out and see if um, those work for you to make foods a little bit healthier, and then also review some um, stress and staying active during the holidays to help make sure you're feeling prepared. All right, so some healthy or some holiday eating worries. So I know we don't get to be super interactive here, but think about some of the things that you tend to worry about while we are going through the holiday season to yourself. And then we've got weight gain. So that tends to be one of the number one things that people are concerned about throughout the holidays. They worry that they're gonna gain weight. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that making unhealthy food choices, overeating, and then stress. So these tend to be the most common eating worries or health worries that uh, pop up during the holiday season. So the great news is, is that actual holidays, there's only a few days worth and a few days isn't going to make or break your health or your diet or it shouldn't. Um, so it's really about making sure that we're not spending, you know, this week all the way through the end of the year making poor decisions health wise and food wise, um, and being able to indulge on the days that you want to be able to indulge. So weight gain, how much weight does the average person gain between Thanksgiving and New Year's Day? The average holiday weight gain is somewhere between 0 0.75 to one pound. So that's not a whole, whole lot, but there were some people that were studied that did gain up to five pounds and some that gained even more. So those who were already overweight or obese tend to gain more pounds than those who were a normal weight starting off the holiday season. And then most of us fail to lose the weight after the holiday, which is one of the reasons why our weight keeps creeping up year after year um, as we get older. So those are just some things to be mindful of. But as far as preventing weight gain, so changing our mindset during this time about around our health and weight loss or weight gain, depending on where you're at with your own health journey, a good way to think about this is changing your mindset and to expect um, or to really focus gaining weight and don't expect to lose weight during the holiday season. For everybody, this is going to be a little bit different, but if you've been just really working towards losing weight, 
and you feel like you're gonna be missing out during the holiday season, then it's very reasonable for you to set a goal just to maintain during the holiday season versus continuing to lose that weight because quality, quality of life is important. Spending time with family and friends and being able to do stuff is important, but our health is also important. So we do wanna keep that at the forefront throughout the next several weeks. Um, and a good way to do that and to alleviate some of that pressure that we tend to put on is to focus on not gaining weight versus trying to also lose weight. So just a little thought there. Planning to keep a regular exercise pattern. This will help to allow some flexibility in your food choices that you have. So again, if you're regularly exercising or you're able to be a little bit more physically active during this time, that's gonna allow you a little bit of wiggle room as far as food choices go. So if you're um, splurging on items that you may not normally splurge on through the rest of the year, it's gonna give you that flexibility. And then when you do get to those holiday meals or uh, traditions that come up throughout the holiday season, splurging on foods that actually make your holiday meaningful versus just splurging on all kinds of food can be helpful. So really thinking about which ones are worth um, the calories and worth the time to prepare and to make um, and how much you may have to exercise to uh, kind of burn that off are things to think about. So just picking the ones that are very meaningful to you or that are your absolute favorites is a good strategy um, for this area. And then focusing on portion sizes. So maybe you love everything about every meal that you have during the holidays. So a uh, idea that you can do here is just having a smaller portion of those foods. So you might be trying a lot of different foods, but you're only you know, having a couple bites of each one just to satisfy that craving because those are foods you might only get during this time of year. But it's also important to remember that a lot of the foods that we eat throughout the holidays actually have a lot of health benefits too. Um, sometimes it's just in how we've prepared the meal or prepared the food that might add extra calories and extra fat. So we can also look at ways to adapt those recipes. Um, so I don't want you to think, you know, all foods that come with the holidays are bad because that's definitely not true at all. So these are some benefits of some of our favorite holiday foods. So you've got party nuts. Nuts are a great source of healthy um, unsaturated fat and also fiber and they're a source of protein. So these are a great snack to have throughout the holidays. Turkey is a very good source of protein for us. And then it also contains vitamins B6, B12, choline, selenium and also zinc. So turkey is a very healthy food for us. Again, if you're deep frying a turkey, um, that might add some extra fat in there that we don't necessarily need. But if you um, are just roasting a turkey in there and you take off the skin, then this is a very healthy food choice for you. And it's just important to remember that a serving size for a turkey um, and protein in general is about three to four ounces or the size of a deck of cards. So the other thing with the holidays, sometimes our eyes are bigger than our stomachs actually are and we really pile on food on our plate. So it's important to remember you can always go back for seconds or you can always take home leftovers and have more. Um, you don't always have to stuff yourself very like, you know, super full at the one meal um, just to get all those foods in. So three to four ounces for your turkey, mashed potatoes, they also contain vitamin B6, uh, potassium, copper, and vitamin C. So again, a serving size of potatoes is about a half cup. So just being mindful of that. Sweet potatoes um, are a great option. They contain fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, potassium, and manganese. And one serving is about a medium potato. So sometimes the sweet potatoes can get really large. So you can just, um, but just a medium potato is going to be a serving and again has some great health benefits here. Green beans, um, a serving is about a cup so you get quite a few green beans here. They're low in calories, they practically have most vitamins and minerals present inside of the green beans so those are a great and then you've got your root vegetables, so things like turnips, beets, carrots, parsnips, sometimes those are on the side um, for some of these things, but choosing a variety of those foods can help get most vitamins and minerals like vitamin C, beta carotene, and folate. Corn, sometimes corn gets a bad rap and people try to avoid corn, but corn is actually full of fiber, also some really good antioxidant and phytonutrients. Uh, so that is a, a great option for you. Baked apples, again, high water, 
They have fiber, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants. Um, you can include a little bit of cinnamon on there for some additional health benefits. Cranberry dishes, um, they're a rich source of antioxidants like your vitamin C and vitamin E. And then even the pumpkin that's in pumpkin pie is an excellent source of fiber, manganese, phosphorus, copper, magnesium, and zinc. So a lot of these foods do have health benefits. Obviously we add some other things to them to make dishes like a corn casserole or again a pumpkin pie. So some of those items that you're adding in, you can make better selections for to have lower fat um, or lower sugar options um, just to make them a little bit healthier the underlying ingredient in these dishes do have health benefits. All right, so some ideas about things that you can do before going to an event if you're gonna be venturing out this year um, to make sure that you're doing some healthy holiday things, not skipping meals. So I hear this one a lot uh, where people are they're saving up their calories, uh, trying to make sure that they can indulge at their dinner meal or having a big lunch, um, but you don't want to do that. So saving up calories leaves us feeling hungry, and then it sets you up to not be in control when you get to the event, and you can end up overeating or stuffing yourself to a point where you're no longer comfortable. Um, so you don't want to do that. You want to have your breakfast in the morning, and you can pick something that's higher in protein, um, some fruit you know, something that's a little bit lighter for you, um, even some Greek yogurt or something like that, just to make sure that you have something on your stomach and you're not uh, coming in super hungry when you get to this event. And then if it's even later in the day, having a snack before you leave home. So again, this is gonna avoid um, that feeling of being too hungry when you arrive. And I know at my family, we always set out, you know, a bunch of appetizers or a veggie tray, something like that. And so we tend to nibble all throughout the time that we're visiting with one another. Um, can add a, just a lot of extra food that you wouldn't normally be eating um, if you didn't feel so hungry when you arrived. And then being the change that you wanna see. So if you're hosting an event, you can include low calorie foods like a fruit tray, vegetable tray, deviled eggs, um, lean meats. You're in control of the menu. So you're able to make some of these uh, food options. But if you're attending an event that's at somebody else's house, then bring what you would want to be eating um, as far as healthier options go. So again, vegetable and fruit trays are pretty easy. Uh, to make sure that you're getting some vegetables and fruits in at that meal. And then of course, deviled eggs, if you wanted to take those. I mean, there's a lot of options. These are just some ideas to give you. And then once you get to the event, hanging out in a different room or in a spot that's across from the food and focusing more on visiting with the people that are there instead of uh, picking and snacking all of the food before the meal actually starts. So sometimes when we get talking and we're visiting with people and we're in a, a good mood and just um, sharing memories and that kind of thing, we just mindlessly kind of put things in our mouth which um, you know, can lead to you already getting full before the meal ever starts and then you have to sit down and eat a big meal. You wanna to try to survey the entire table before you start setting your plate. So you wanna know which foods you're uh, eyeballing and are worth eating and that you're gonna enjoy the most. And then ones that you don't really wanna waste um, calories on that aren't gonna bring you pleasure. So you wanna make sure you're just picking the ones that really bring you joy versus ones that you're just like, eh, I could take it or leave it. So if you wanna fill up on other things, um, that's a good strategy to do as well. And then again, just watching your, so you don't have to cover your plate completely full with food. It doesn't have to be like a little volcano on your plate. Um, you can always go back for seconds or again, take some home for less leftovers. Um, so a couple bites of each thing, depending on how many dishes are on the table um, is a good strategy just so you can taste a little bit of everything if all the things um, are exciting to you or again just focusing on the ones that you really like. And then you do not have to be part of the clean plate club. You don't have to eat all of the food that's on your plate, especially if um, you know you did pilot a little bit higher than you normally would. So it's okay to leave a few bites behind every time you eat, especially if you're not enjoying something. Um, so just be mindful of that. Uh, the next tip is trying to eat your calories versus drink them. So sticking to lower calorie or non-calorie beverages um, is preferred. And then if you have mixed drinks that have alcohol, something like eggnog or punch, um, those can add up to like 500 calories per cup. So you just wanna be, again, mindful of that. 
and the American Institute for Cancer Research recommends not drinking alcohol, so skipping these all together is usually a good strategy for cancer prevention. But if you do have um, alcoholic drinks at these meals or their mixed um, drinks that have, you know, mixers and things that have a lot of sugar in them, just make sure you're staying hydrated in between. So if you drink, then have a large glass of water in between. Make sure that you are one, flushing out your system, um, and two, you're also spacing out those drinks so you can be in better control of that. So just to summarize some of these tips, the big thing is portions, eat slowly, savor the taste of these holiday treats. You know, for a lot of people, we just make these foods this time of year and the rest of the year, you don't really get to have them. Although there's no rule saying that you cannot have these foods throughout the rest of the year. Um, but in general, I know a lot of families just kind of stick around the holidays. So enjoy yourself. Again, one meal is not going to make or break your diet or your health. Um, so enjoy that time and just try to be mindful of you know, not eating that way for the full six weeks if you're just indulging yourself um, during the meal. So let's talk about recipe modifications and some things that you may be able to do to some of your favorite dishes just to make them a little bit healthier by reducing the fat and reducing the calories. So substituting skim milk and low fat options for higher fat products. So if you have things that are calling for whole milk, half and half, whole whipping cream, a lot of times you can substitute skim milk or a 1% option here. You could do some of the nut milks, some of the different things that are out there to help cut down on that higher fat content that are in those um, dairy products. Using two egg whites in place of one egg can reduce dietary cholesterol and also produce the same result. Um, so that is usually a, a pretty helpful tip. Using fat-free Greek yogurt in place of recipes for sour cream or mayonnaise. Um, this one's probably my favorite. I do this a lot. Like when I make chili, instead of putting sour cream, I just put like a dollop of plain Greek yogurt. Um, and I really can't taste the difference. I do the same thing when I make different salad dressings at home. I like to use Greek yogurt as the base instead of mayonnaise. Um, so those are some ideas that you can do. And usually if it's in a recipe, it's very hard to tell. Um, and even if you just cut it in half, like you did half mayonnaise, half Greek yogurt, um, just so you have a little bit of that mayonnaise flavor, that can be, again, a little bit of change is still great. You can try slicing um, or the little almonds to add crunch to dishes versus using something that's fried, like a fried onion, like those little fried onion crisps or um, croutons are a nice, so that way you have the almond, which is a nut, which has those healthy fats, a little bit of fiber and a little bit of protein versus something that doesn't have a lot of nutrition quality to it. Choosing low sodium broths to help cut down on sodium in recipes, a lot of recipes salt anyway, so you're probably going to be adding it in. So that's just a way that you can get um, a little bit less sodium in your diet there. So these are just some examples. If you switched from evaporated whole milk to evaporated skim milk, you're going to save 143 calories and 15 grams of fat per eight fluid ounces. So that's a cup. Um, so 15 grams of fat saved is significant and that's usually a saturated fat, not heart healthy. So that is a great option. Heavy cream to evaporated skim milk actually saves you about 604 calories and 83 grams of fat. So heavy cream is just what it says. It's very heavy um, per one cup. So try some of these things out uh, and see if it helps to save and keeps your dish or your traditions alive, but a little bit healthier. And then switching from regular cream cheese to light or a fat-free cream cheese can save you 40 to 70 calories and five to gr 10 grams of fat per one ounce. So one ounce, you know, that I feel like eight ounces comes in one of those little cream cheese bricks there. So that's a lot of calories and fat saved here as well. So it's just being mindful of these kind of things um, and trading out things where you can. Some other cooking tips for you. So when you think about your meat, poultry, fish, whatever you happen to be making, seasoning those with herbs and spices versus salt, sauces, and butter. 
um, help give it good flavor, but also again, cuts down on some of the fat and the sodium content that's found in those foods, but it's still giving you some good um, bold flavor there with different herbs and spices. You can cook it on a rack so that the fat drips off onto the bottom of the tray. Um, and that way you're not getting that saturated fat that is going to be coming off of it. And then again, choosing those low sodium, low fat broths um, when you can. With your soups and salads, you can actually use a pureed potato in place of cream to thicken soups. I actually just changed something in my tomato basil soup that I like. Instead of using flour and butter and making a roux to thicken my tomato basil, I've actually been adding red lentils inside and just simmering those while all the vegetables are cooking. And that actually has been helping to thicken up my tomato basil soup while adding fiber and a little bit of protein in there. So you can, don't be afraid to be a little bit creative. I am the least creative cook out there. Um, so I was pretty proud of my Myself for coming up with that and cutting out the butter and the flour and using a uh, lentil. You can substitute beans for meat and chili. Uh, so that's another great idea or do like half the meat and half beans. So you're getting a lot of fiber and protein from those plant-based uh, protein sources like beans. Trying flavored vinegar and olive oil dressings um, instead of things that have mayonnaise and other and then using orange or lemon juice in place of some oils in the homemade dressings and that cuts the fat down even further, even though usually you know your olive oil is a healthy fat choice, but we're always looking to cut down on some of those calories during the holiday season. If you like making casseroles, you can use your egg beaters versus the whole egg. Um, again, to help cut down on some of the fat and the dietary cholesterol. You can reduce the amount of margarine or butter or use a light version of those. Um, sometimes you can cut things as much as in half um, and it doesn't really alter the taste. I know I have like a rice dish that's been passed down in my family that calls for an entire stick of butter um, and I cut it down to just a half stick and it actually greasy. Um, so just again, experiment and see what, what turns out and how, it, how good it is. And then using fresh or frozen ingredients versus canned. Um, so if you do have canned, you just wanna make sure if it's like canned green beans or a vegetable that you're able to rinse, that you wanna rinse a lot of that excess sodium off if you can. And then if it's something that's fruit-based, you wanna try to make sure those are packed in juice versus in a heavy syrup um, or really any kind of syrup. But if you can switch it out for a fresh or frozen option, uh, that would be even better. Stuffing, um, using low fat light butter or margarine instead of a full fat butter, using egg whites or egg beaters, trying chicken or turkey sausage versus pork sausage, cutting down on that red meat, and then using fat free low sodium chicken broth again and using a whole grain bread um, as your base there. Mashed potatoes, you can think about um, making these with a low fat cream cheese or with whipped butter instead of a stick of butter. Everybody makes their mashed potatoes a little bit different. So these are just some ideas. You can replace some of the potatoes with steamed cauliflower. I did do this one year um, and I let my brother eat like most of it until I told him it was cauliflower. And he was very pleasantly surprised that he actually liked it. So you never know where you can slip things in. And then you can also use 1% or 2% or even like a low fat buttermilk in place of heavy cream if you use that in your recipe. And then for cornbread, using that low fat buttermilk, using egg whites or egg beaters instead of those whole eggs, and then cutting down on the oil, um, adding a splash of milk or some applesauce to give it that moisture is usually pretty acceptable here as well. And then if you're a baker and you like baking, this is a little bit fun. You can actually add some flax meal and wheat germ into the batter. That's gonna help give it some more fiber for you. You can use unsweetened applesauce, a plain Greek yogurt, or like a pumpkin puree in place of um, oil. And that again, will give it moisture and keep it um, tasting good. And you really can't taste those things once they're inside. And then using egg beaters in place of eggs. We've talked about that. Experimenting with different kinds of flours. There's like teff, quinoa, oat. There's even um, a garbanzo fava bean flour out there. Um, so you don't always have to just use the standard wheat flour just to get a little bit crazy and switch things up. 
And then also you could add a few tablespoons of oat bran in place of some of the flour, and that's gonna add some fiber into whatever you're baking. Um, so I'm ready for baking season to begin. All right, some more baking tips. Again, using oil in place of melted butter or margarine where you can. Choosing margarines or other fat options that do not contain partially hydrogenated oils. So I do get a lot of questions about like margarines or that kind of thing. And they have so many out on the market right now. You can normally find them without partially hydrogenated oil. So they might be like a canola oil margarine. I'm, they have tons of them out there. So just flip it over, read the ingredient list that's under the food label and make sure that there's nothing that says partially hydrogenated on it. Um, and that way you know that you're not getting trans fats in that product. And then for some reasons, you, or for some reasons, for some recipes, you can actually remove about a fourth of a cup um, or a fourth of the sugar that it calls for in the taste or texture. So again, this is a little bit of an experiment, but anywhere that you kind of cut some of these things out um, is gonna be helpful as far as preventing weight gain and then just your overall health. And then toasting nuts can actually make them more flavorful and you can use less than the recipe calls for. So even though nuts obviously are a very healthy fat and they've got fiber and protein, they do have a lot of calories in them. So if you're adding them to baked goods or to something that already also has a lot of calories, this is just a way to kind of cut down on those a little bit. All right, so moving on to stress and addressing stress. Sometimes this can be a very stressful time for people. Sometimes this is like what you were made for. So it just depends on who you are. But keeping healthy snacks on hand, taking stuff with you when you're out and about and going, especially if you're out shopping or just spending longer days away from home, um, just having something in your bag or with you in the car that's healthy that you can grab and feel good about um, is great. Scheduling enough sleep. So we definitely aiming for like seven to eight hours. Some studies I've seen seven to nine hours of sleep. So um, this is very important for managing stress and making sure that you're scheduling enough time and not apologizing for it. I'm all about getting enough sleep. Scheduling quiet time. This can be a very busy time for a lot of people. And we've spent like the last 18, 19 months uh, secluded for a lot of us. So scheduling quiet time when you need it, if things are becoming too hectic, that's perfectly fine. If you're going through treatment and you just need a little time to decompress, perfectly fine. Find a space that you're able to do that um, and just have some time to yourself. And then trying to be active each day. So even if you have to break it up in smaller little 10 minute walks a few times a day, just to give yourself some extra steps to give a, yourself again, some little quiet time, um, maybe for yourself, this is the time that you schedule. Um, and then just making sure that you are staying active and then enjoying your holiday. It is okay. Um, to say no, because you need rest, but you know, this is your holiday too, just as anybody else. So you don't want to have to fulfill everybody else's expectations. Um, again, especially if you're feeling fatigued or tired, if you're going through treatment or you're recovering after treatment. So just try to remember that you want to enjoy this time too. Um, even if you are spending it with other people, um, it should be a pleasant experience for, for the whole group. So just a couple tips on staying active. You can also celebrate with activities. So planning some activities and quality time beyond meals. Um, so sometimes I know my family, we just meet for meals, but it would also be nice to spend time with um, family and friends while they're all gathered. Um, so you can do things. There's a lot of virtual like turkey trots and other events that have been happening since COVID hit that you can take part in going ice skating, playing a game together, um, walking around a festive park or square. There'll be a lot of tree lightings that are coming up um, through the next few weeks. So that can be fun. And then also volunteering if you're able to, again, just to have that bonding time with other people, or maybe that's something that you like. Um, but things don't always have to revolve around just our meals too. And then exercise, just try to stay flexible. You might miss some of your works, workouts, but you might be able to sneak in exercise when you can, like just going for a walk after a large meal. Again, planning an ice skating trip, something fun uh, to do with the family or friends. 
travel and exercise. If you um, have a gym membership, you can ask if they have access to nationwide networks of gyms. So if you're traveling, you can ask, you know, does my membership also work in this other state and see what those options are. A lot of hotels have gyms now. Um, so you can do that. You can also ask for guest passes at a local gym. You can walk, run, and climb stairs. You don't even have to go to a gym. You can travel with some resistance bands and do some resistance training at your hotel, at your, you know, wherever you happen to be staying. And again, there's absolutely nothing a walk around the block perfectly fine um, and then you can focus on getting back to your regular routine once you get home or once people leave and you can kind of settle down and back into your normal regular routine here so be easy on yourself stay flexible and uh, just move where you can and that is usually pretty good for the holidays here um, there are some helpful resources. So the CDC has some guidelines around um, holidays, Thanksgiving, dealing with COVID. This is a little bit um, from the 2020, so from last year. So um, things are a little bit different now this year, but a lot of people are still being very cautious. So just be mindful. And then there are some great recipes from the American Institute for Cancer Research. Um, talking about different foods that you might have at Thanksgiving or even Christmas or other holidays that are coming up. Um, so just some makeover ideas if you are interested in changing some of your dishes around to make them a little bit more cancer fighting friendly. And then just remember, you don't have to eat so much that you feel so stuffed that you can't move anything. So I like this little the don't gobble till you wobble reminder here for us today if anybody has questions. Thank you, Kristen. That was a wonderful presentation. Um, I open the chat or you're welcome to unmute yourself. Anybody has any questions or if you have any recommendations, something that you do at home to help substitute in recipes or help get exercise during the holidays, please um, unmute yourself and share. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, and while we wait for those questions to come in, I did want to mention that next month we will have our final cooking demo of the month. Um, just like this presentation, it will be on healthy holidays. It is using natural sweeteners to help um, sweeten desserts. So that will be on December 8th at 11 o'clock. And you can register for that on our website, csatlanta.org. Um, and we'd hope to see you there. I did send you a recipe as well, Emily, right? Yes, you did, and I will share that. Perfect. Yeah, I think I pulled that recipe off the AICR website too. And Kristen also did share her slides for today that I are posted on our website, and the recipe is already on the website as well, csatlanta.org under nutrition, um, but I'm gonna post it in the chat box now. Kristen, I don't know if we've talked about this before, but do you know anything about some of the um, low sugar wine um, deliveries that I've been seeing pop up or anything about substituting for low sugar alcoholic beverages? That seems to be one that people forget about and it sneaks up on you. Yes, it can definitely sneak up on you. And it is sometimes hard to figure out what exactly is in some of the beverages. So obviously, if you're making your own mixed drinks and you're choosing to drink alcohol, then uh, you can control those ingredients and how much sugar is in them. But yeah, with the wines and stuff, um, I am familiar with some of them. There are some of the dietitians here that prefer those uh, wines. I don't know how much added sugar tends to go into different kinds of wines. And again, I haven't done a whole lot of research on how much sugar tends to be in wine or is added to wine. Um, but yes, a lot of those that you're talking about tend to partner with um, vineyards that, you know, they're committed to being organic. They are low in any kind of additives that might go on during the fermenting process. So um, I don't know like a whole, whole lot to make recommendations since the current recommendation is to not drink alcohol, but yes, just being cautious there. 
And if you can do your research, uh, I mean, there's so many bottles just at my Costco that I can't go through all of them to look, but um, yeah, that's definitely an area that you can cut down on added sugars and kind of do it yourself just so you know what's happening inside of the drinks that you're making. Okay, thank you. We did have a question come in. Um, you said to consider using no partial hydrogenated butter. Would margarine or butter spread with canola oil be an alternative? Any other butter alternative suggestions? So with that, it's the partially hydrogenated oil that you're looking out for on the um, ingredient list. So margarines tend, like old traditional margarine, tends to have um, hydrogenated oils in them. So that's why you want to look for an alternative um, option or at least double check the margarine if you're using a margarine to make sure that it does not have the, hydro oh, here we go, the partially hydrogenated oil as an ingredient. So even if it says it's made out of canola oil, uh, you still want to flip it around and check out the ingredients because sometimes they can get a little bit sneaky um, and add some things in, even if they're marketing it on the front as made with a, a certain kind of oil. So just double checking that. Um, and partially hydrogenated oils, those are usually man-made, um, like a chemical that's used or it's like a chemical process that they do. Um, to help make it solidified and to be shelf stable. So butter doesn't naturally have partially hydrogenated oil in it um, naturally. So not to say that somebody couldn't add it in later on the back end, but in general, I don't think the butters actually have the hydrogenated oils, but butter is higher in saturated fat. And then margarines, um, you just have to be cautious because they could have some of these trans fats in there and they don't always list the trans fat is always listed on the nutrition food label if you look under the fat section, but they don't have to report it if it's less than 0.5 grams. Um, so it could still have a little bit of this uh, trans fat in there and we try to avoid trans fat the best that we can. And there are also like some plant-based margarines or spreads out there um, that you just also have to double check that nothing was partially hydrogenated in that processing either. Thank you. I know in my house, I love to bake um, and I've definitely done the substitution of the applesauce, especially for little treats that I make my kids. Um, and nobody seems to notice that it's not oil and applesauce instead. Yeah, that's a good one. And then I've gotten into like the pumpkin puree because they're just such large cans and I don't always need to use it. So I always have like extra pumpkin left over. So that's a really nice one to add into just that um, or letting it go bad. Absolutely. And I loved the um, idea. I'm definitely gonna have to look for um, the evaporated skim milk because that was a significant uh, difference in calories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And again, like sometimes you've got your favorite recipes and you're just not willing to budge on them, but sometimes you've got some that you're in the middle on and there are some rooms for improvement. And I know this with my dad, when he was diagnosed with diabetes, he was diagnosed like in October. So that Thanksgiving in November, he was very, um, you know, we're sticking to tradition, but since then he has like, we no longer make the sweet potato casserole. He makes just roasted sweet potatoes and he adds a little bit of brown sugar. So he's able to kind of control that, but he's still getting foods that he likes. It just might not be that traditional to always have at our um, Thanksgiving. Same's true with like green bean casserole. We used to make like the canned green bean casserole, but now he uses whole green beans. And so it does taste a little bit different, but like, you know, he's getting a little bit, um, he's still branching out into, I think he's even just transitioned to just eating green beans versus a casserole. So it can be done if you want. Someone had asked, um, how much pumpkin puree do you use as a substitute? I think it's usually equal to like whatever the recipe calls for. So if it's like a half cup of oil, you would use like a half cup conversion. Okay, that's easy. I will double check that because I am not that much into baking, but I'm pretty sure that is, it's like a equal part conversion. Any other questions? 
Someone is asking about the fresh market Thanksgiving prepared meal. I don't know if you know anything about that. I do not. I'm sure it's delicious. And again, one meal is not going to make or break, you know, your health or your situation. So if that's what's easiest for you, and it's a one meal with some leftovers, that's usually going to be perfectly fine. All right. If there aren't any further questions, uh, just a reminder, we do have that cooking demo next month on naturally sweetened holiday desserts on December 8th at 11 o'clock. And you can register on our website, csatlanta.org. And also Kristen's doing another presentation tomorrow. Kristen, if you wanted to speak a little bit on that. I can, I did confirm it's a one-to-one -one conversion. If you have like one cup of oil, the recipe calls for you can use one cup, of, one cup of pumpkin puree. I am giving this exact same presentation tomorrow uh, for a series that comes out of our Cherokee campus. It's called Wellness Wednesdays. And I have roped in a, my coworker. So we're gonna be doing it together, um, but it will be this exact same content. So if you feel like you wanna hear it twice or you've got a friend that might benefit from it, um, we can figure out how to get you registered for that class. And I'm going to attempt to uh, demo the air fryer with some sweet potatoes, but um, it'll be like my first demo. So I might look like an amateur, but we're gonna do our best. I'm sure it'll be great. <laughs> um, somebody did ask, yes, we have we are recording this session and it will be posted on our website in the next week or so once we have it downloaded and edited. Um, but yes, we do post all of our videos on our website of uh, Kristen's nutrition seminars. All right. Any other questions? I'll give it another minute. Well, Kristen, this is your last nutrition seminar for 2021. Um, it's been a great year. Thank you so much. These have been wonderful and a great asset for our community. And we appreciate you so much and, and look forward to doing these again next year. Of course, we'll be back in January. All right, everyone, we'll have a wonderful holiday season. Thank you for joining Cancer Support Community Atlanta for this program. If you're interested in other live or recorded programs, please visit the online program tab of our website, cscatlanta.org. Or follow us on Facebook. We'll be sharing additional information on upcoming programs.